Forum today being brought to you by ITD Group Computer Services. At your service, cleaning and tree service, George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, and Banner Payson Medical Center. Well, it's Friday. It's four minutes past nine o'clock. It's 65 degrees, and you know it's Friday, so you know what time it is. That's right. With more aggressiveness than, than the intruder, prettier than ugly dolls, and a bigger gas than blazing saddles, it's your hometown <laughs> movie guys with us live in the studio, and glad to have you all here today. How's it going? Uh, good. Uh, good. We like to be here, Randy. <laughs> good. We like to have you here. That's a gas. That was it. And speaking of that, we need to start off by saying uh, that uh, you know, if you like a good comedy, and especially in the in the type of comedy that they just don't make anymore, for actually probably some fairly obvious reasons, um, Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddles, the classic movie Saturday, which is playing tomorrow. Of course, the first Saturday of every month, they do the classic movie thing. It starts at 10 a.m. You get in for just five dollars. And if you haven't seen Blazing Saddles, well, where the heck you been? In order to ruin a western town, a corrupt politician appoints a black sheriff who promptly becomes his most formidable adversary. It's actually a really funny movie, but as we've mentioned here in the past, Tina, I, I doubt you could get away with uh, producing a movie like this today because everybody gets offended by everything. Well, it doesn't make me cranky. That movie makes me uncranky. Oh, I like it. So you are going to go tomorrow, right? Oh, pff, man, I will be there in space. And you'll yeah, be decrankified. Yeah. I want it. I want my Gucci saddlebags to come with me. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, come and see the movie. And if you are interested in this, we do suggest you get there early because often there are so many seats taken up that you, you can't even sit together if you come late. Boy, I know. I, I got there late one time. My yeah. wife and I were up in the front row. Yes, you were. And then we were at the chiropractor after that. <laughs> but uh, no, it's always a lot of fun, though. And, and I, I just think seeing Blazing Saddles back on the big screen, ah, that's just going to be fun. There's so many in-jokes of that, and uh, oh, man, it's such a great movie. Well, and Andy, I think one of the things about this is that Mel Brooks had a, a wonderful way of, there was just all kinds of, of little one-liners, double entendre, I mean, there was just all, it seems like in everything the guy wrote, there's, it's just, you know, one laugh after another. Yeah, I think he uh, harkens back to the, uh, the old days of vaudeville. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, if, you, if you think of the, the, some of the movies they made uh, uh, in the 30s with uh, Mae West. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Marx Brothers. And the Marx Brothers, yeah. yeah. You're right, just, just one quip after another, after another. And he writes his own music and <coughs> songs. You know, all the songs in all of his movies, he wrote the words and the music. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. for real. Mel Brooks. I didn't yes. realize he was a composer. Yes, and so at, he, at the end, I believe they, um, it's, uh, or at the beginning, you know, he wore a blazing saddle. Um, Marty Robbins. This he got one? Marty Robbins to sing in, uh, in the theme. In, yeah, yeah. I was thinking uh, Blue Shadows, but that was actually from City Slickers. Um, yeah. Uh, different song, or different movie, different song, but, yeah. but still funny nonetheless. Yeah, but I mean, he, really honestly, he's, he's a, a major talent and he has made the comment that nobody can be funny anymore because we are so PC. So if you are of that mind and you, are, you yearn for hilarity, come tomorrow. It'll be a gas, um, especially around the campfire. Yes. And, uh, and, and let's not forget, too, that uh, tomorrow, when uh, we're out there seeing Blazing Saddles, that tomorrow is officially uh, Star Wars Day. Really? Yes. Tomorrow is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. That's it, buddy. <laughs> you got it. And work on that speech in gentlemen. <laughs> um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things here, uh, uh, Craig, is that, uh, you know, you've been doing this uh, classic movie Saturday thing on the first Saturday of each month. and. And uh, I know we've got Blazing Saddles tomorrow, but are you doing the same thing where you're going to be asking those in attendance tomorrow to vote on what uh, June's movie is going to be? Yes, definitely. And do we have any thoughts as to what it might be? Yeah, any absolutely. suggestions? Yeah, absolutely zero. We have a blank slate right yeah. now. Wow. So, yeah. <coughs> so now, is, is there like a huge movie library out there that you can pull from for these classic movies to be able to get um, copies in like this? Or? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow, pretty cool. But we're going to do a, a June, so I, I don't know, you know, summer, summer movies maybe? Right. Uh, Beach blanket yeah, bingo. Uh, you know, some uh, fair, fair Steelers day off. Oh, there you go. You know, uh, kind of tough kitchen on goes to Hollywood. Kitchen, uh, kitchen. Wow, I forgot all about <laughs> kitchen. Man, that goes. We're really fast dating times, ourselves here badly. Fast times are rich, my Yeah, there you go. Oh, that, wow. That's the fun. <laughs> so anyway, make sure you uh, watch Blazing Saddles at the Sawmill Theaters tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Get there early so you can get a good seat. You can get in for just five bucks and also vote on what classic movie will be brought in 
on uh, for the month of June. And uh, yeah, it's just something about seeing these old movies on the big screen again. And, you know, with the Gone with the Wind and things like that, it's neat to see that on the big screen. But I, I, I'm really ready for some comic relief. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it back to Pace tomorrow. I have to go down to the valley and do a hospital visit. But uh, but I'm hoping to uh, be able to Jeez. schedule yeah. this in somehow. Hospital visit versus Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles will put you in the hospital. Uh, yes, you can laugh yourself all the way there. Uh, yes, yes. And my, one of my favorite lines, which you can quote on the radio, is Mongo just pawn in great. What, what is it? Mongo just uh, pawn in great um, something of life. Yeah. Mongo, the character Mongo, is wonderful. Yeah, and he's yeah. a little hard on horses. Yeah. But uh, but yes. you, you have to watch the movie and you'll figure it all out. Yes. Now, one of the other things we wanted to find out about, too, I was curious, uh, Craig, uh, you know, this is, what, I think, the second week for Avengers Endgame? Uh, the start of it, yeah, this is yeah. the end of the first week was right. yesterday. And I know this thing has been setting some big box office it, records it, already. It, it didn't set records, it, it crushed records. <laughs> wow. Uh, they were, uh, the, the three-day record was 257 from The Force Awakens. 257 million. Million in three days. Uh, Avengers came in at 360 million. In three days. Domestic. That's just domestic. And that's not worldwide. Wow. Worldwide was 1.2 billion. In one weekend? Yes. I'm going to just say it again. I know I say it a lot, but we're in the wrong business. It, it's, it's coming up on half a billion dollars domestic now. Wow! And, and it just its first week, so this is a uh, uh, this is one of those you know, once every twenty year type films. Right. And Tina, have you seen this yet? Have any I have not. You have not. No, well, no wonder you're still grumpy. Well. Mm, I don't know. It's a three-hour <laughs> movie. That might make right. me a little grumpy. Got to plan ahead on that. Yeah. And, it, it goes really quick. It, 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 that's it what does. I've heard. I mean, it doesn't really that. seem like that's three what hours. That's Craig says. Because yeah. he, he's, well, he's, he's an kind of guy. <laughs> it, it really doesn't. It, it doesn't drag out at all. And uh, I mean, there's just so much going on with this movie. And, wow. Uh, it, it's it's got everything to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a so a, a lot a of uh, special effects, eye candy, and that kind of stuff too. Sure. Well, sure, but I mean, there, there's also, I mean, these character interactions. They did an, uh, an amazing job with it first. I mean, this is kind of a, you know, like the ultimate ensemble film where you've got you know, 20 or so main characters that, that they really kind of mash them all in there and and, mm -hmm. and and do service to all of them. Wow, interesting. And uh, Andy, have you seen this one yet? Uh, you betcha. And and so, uh, how many saw blades are you throwing at this one? I think I gave it four. Four, four out of five. Four out of five. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, so what was the what was the? It's not the, the greatest greatest movie of all time, but uh, boy, is, it sure is great. Right. What's the strongest point and the weakest point? Uh, the strongest point is the as uh, Craig points out the uh, character interaction <coughs> and the acting. Yeah. So I understand the writing is actually pretty decent. Uh, the, the, the writing is great too. Uh, we have. 20, yeah, about let me, let me say about 20 people, uh, uh, actors in this movie, who either have won or have been nominated for Academy Awards. Wow! So this is not, uh, you know, Zombievers or something that where you've got uh, uh, some special effects and some actors that have uh, been out of acting school for a week and a half. This is this is a full two weeks. Huh? No, this is this is really really great stuff. <clears throat> I cried more times during the course of this three hours and one minute movie than I did during Titanic. So when you say this is a movie with eye candy, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, they spent 350 million bucks to make this thing, and a lot of it uh, yeah, goes for the special effects. Well, but Andy, I mean, there's times here where you cry during commercial breaks, so. Well, I, I'm a kind of a, an Alan Alda kind of a guy. <laughs> yeah, you know? Nothing wrong with that. It's full so, of, full of uh, all of these feelings. So it's not just uh, sci-fi action. It's uh, it's actually some good writing that uh, has an emotional pull on you. Well, yeah, and, and if you remember, uh, the previous Avengers movie ended with uh, Thanos, this uh, galactic villain, uh, snapping his fingers, and half of all the people, all of the... Uh, human people, all of the the uh, the pink people, all of the green people, all of the uh, bizarre-looking people, uh, all oh, of the. Oh, you mean the ones at Walmart? All of the <laughs> intelligence. Well, you better people. not go there anymore. <laughs> yeah, the band. <clears throat> all all of the intelligent beings, half. Uh, the, in the entire galaxy right. were extinguished at the snap of Thanos' fingers. Wow. So all of our characters... Sounds like a fun guy. Uh, no, he's a really... A, a, he's an ecologist. He thinks that there's too many people for the ecology of the galaxy, so he mm -hmm. wipes them out. Wow. Um, 
So we have all of our characters are either dead, mm -hmm. you know, that we've been following for what, 11 years, Greg? Yes. Has this know. Avengers thing been going on for 11 years? Yes. So wow. the, Marvel, the Marvel Universe, and right. by now they've incorporated uh, just about everybody. Uh, 20 some films. I think this is the 21st film. And there's a reason they keep making them because they're making money, obviously. Oh boy, are they. So, you know, we, we're invested in these characters. We've been following them for years. Right. So, uh, when, uh, uh, when Hawkeye, for instance, he's the guy that uses the bow and arrow, uh, when, uh, when he loses his family, uh, we've got this guy that's uh, uh, an Academy Award nominee, and he expresses his sorrow. Uh, his uh, his distress, his his emotional destruction, uh, in, in in a very vivid way, and it hits us. And he's not the only one. Like I say, half the half the people in the galaxy are gone, and uh, all of the all of the survivors have lost uh, people who are dear to them, and it's it's really tragic. I mean, wow. it's really sad. So it sounds, you know, like this one of these movies that really takes you through, uh, you know, a complete, you know, rainbow of emotions. Yeah, well, yeah, de definitely. I was going to say that. You know, I, I mean, it, there's definitely some some somberness to this this movie, mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a lot of humor to it too. I mean, you're you're definitely gonna there, there's some good laughs in this also, and it, it does takes you up and down. And uh, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll yeah, want to buy the T-shirt. It, 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 it's uh, it's more popcorn. Yeah, no, popcorn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. This is this is a uh, you know, like you said a solid movie. I, I mean, the movies don't make this much money uh, by accident. You know, there, there's definitely something to this. There's some substance, and uh, this is a great movie. And uh, they had me right at the beginning. Uh, the kind of the opening, uh, the opening few minutes, they play uh, Mr. Fantasy by Traffic. Oh wow! Yeah, so it got me right away. And then <laughs> I know I, all of our country music fans here are really familiar with Traffic, but, <laughs> but I know oh, I am. Stevie anyway. Winwood. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful song, and I, it's something I certainly did not expect in this uh, sci-fi movie. Very interesting. <clears throat> and then. Uh, one of the things that, that makes the Marvel Universe so much fun is the asides, the, the kind of oblique references to uh, uh, things outside of the movie. And uh, right at the beginning of the movie, again, uh, Iron Man goes on this screed, as he's prone to do, and in, in that screed, in the space of about a minute, uh, he references movie lyrics from both the Beatles and the Stones. So it was, wow. I mean, it's just incredible, yeah. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Oh, now, yeah. That, take, that was really great. <laughs> we got to take a fast break. We're going to come back and uh, find out a little bit more about what's playing at the Sawmill Theaters. Also, I want you to be doing some thinking in the meantime, because our question for you of the day today, who is your favorite movie hero? Uh, whether it's uh, you know the actual actor themselves or the, the character that they portrayed in the movie, uh, who is your favorite movie hero? You know, when I first started thinking about that this morning, I, I started, uh, you know, jotting down a couple of notes, and uh, the more people I talked to, the more the, uh, the, the list of names grew. So we got some uh, interesting points for you to think about on that, and we'll look forward to your calls in just a little bit at 474-2427. But first, in the meantime, this morning, talking with your hometown movie guys here on Rim Country Forum. Uh, of course, we mentioned that uh, the classic movie Saturday uh, plays tomorrow, and that's Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddle starts at 10 o'clock. Also, we talked a little bit about the Avengers Endgame just uh, finishing out its first week. Already uh, internationally, that thing has generated over a billion dollars just in its first three days. So, what did they spend uh, to make that movie, Andy? What? <laughs> in a word, a lot. Three hundred and fifty-six million dollars. All right. So they're over a billion. So they're getting into the black here, and and uh, wow, that's interesting. So that's just some of the stuff playing. Also, one of the other movies that uh, starts today is uh, it's got uh, Dennis Dennis Quaid in it, if I'm not mistaken, and that's uh, uh, the Intruder a story about a young couple that buy a beautiful house, but the man they bought it from refuses to let go of the property. And it's rated PG-13, plays at 1.15, 4.15, and 7.15. What do we know about this movie so far? Um, is, is this is kind of a suspense thriller. Yeah. Uh, and and Dennis Quaid, he's, he's really brings, uh, lately, he's, he, I don't know, maybe the way his face has become chiseled with age or whatever. I mean, he, he plays a mad guy pretty well. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a different role for him. You know, it's kind of a, uh, he definitely plays the, the creepy bad guy in this, though. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just looking at the trailers, he... So he does it pretty well. And uh, do we have we had any word yet on uh, how much money was spent to, to produce this movie? No, couldn't have been too much here. Uh, it's not not a big budget movie. Um, 
Uh, no, they <clears throat> eight million bucks. They probably spent more on tacos for uh, the Avengers movie than uh, they made. They spent on making this whole movie. Wow. And, uh, and they were really good tacos, though. So. Um, uh, from, from what I've heard from the people I know in the movie business, uh, uh, the, the crew and the, um, and the actors are taken care of uh, to the best of the ability of the producers. So they have, uh, uh, they have gourmet uh, food prep people, uh, gourmet chefs. So these really were good tacos. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 that wasn't tongue-in-cheek. Uh, it was taco-in-cheek. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> they, <laughs> but they, they really feed them well and they, they treat them well. Um, right. uh, ben Stein said that, that he likes to make movies because everybody is so nice to him. And I think that's the way they do it. At least the, the good movies. I like Ben Stein's style. I had something about that guy that always cracks me up. Now, um, uh, again, uh, we've got a number of other movies to talk about, but we also have a caller on the line, so let's go to the phones. Uh, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. Oh, sure. We're at 500 East Tyler Parkway. You know where Tyler Parkway is? Well, okay, well, if you, if, you, if you go north on 87 to the north end of Payson and uh, where you get to Home Depot, Home Depot's, uh, you know, to the, to the west and Tyler Parkway goes off to the east, just uh, uh, turn on Tyler Parkway headed east there. We're just uh, about a block and a half down on the left-hand side. There's a couple of 200-foot towers outside that'll be a real big giveaway for you. But, yeah, feel free to come by before 4 o'clock and we'll be happy to get you taken care of. Thanks for the call. Meanwhile, back at reality. Um, today at Sawmill Theaters, a lot of great movies playing. And this intruder again uh, starting today. And um, I'm, so, I'm amazed that uh, you know movies can be made that inexpensively anymore. I mean, six million uh, total production costs for this. You probably are true. The, the snack truck probably you know, generated more revenue on this thing. But uh, it starts today. And I don't know, Dennis Quaid, what was that uh, the last uh, face, faith-based movie that uh, he was in, uh, I Can Only Imagine? Yes. I thought he played the part of uh, you know, an angry, drunk dad really well. And, that, and by the way, that is on Prime, I think, or either Netflix. I think it's on Prime. And, if you, have, yeah. and, if, and if you haven't seen that movie uh, yet, get, get out and see it. Fabulous. It's a great message, yes. and it's really well done. And yeah. of course, the song that that uh, is you know, based uh, loosely or not so loosely on a, a true story, but the song that was generated from that was one that most people would know, I can only imagine. And I just think, uh, one, you know, I, I really loved the song when I first heard it, but then after hearing the story that was the motivation behind the guy that wrote it, um, and I just love it that much more. Great movie. Yeah, at any rate, back to Dennis Quaid. He's uh, not in necessarily involved in big dollar movies, but uh, um, I imagine he's, I mean, he's staying busy. It seems like he keeps getting his mug on a lot of different flicks these days. Yeah, he works. Yeah. 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 All right, now, um, one of the other movies that's uh, uh, playing still is The Mustang. And uh, this is a movie about a guy who uh, is apparently a pretty violent guy, gets sent to prison, and uh, they really can't control him. He gets uh, teamed up in a, a horse therapy program with a Mustang that has kind of the same sort of disposition, and it's a story about the interaction between the two. And uh, How has this been going, first of all, at the box office? Uh, so, so. Yeah. In two words. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's probably done a little bit better in Payson than it has nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one that just never really took off. Um, and one of the weird ones, too, this was Focus Features did this, and they, um, I, I don't know what they were doing. They, they started out with just four theaters, and they just kind of slowly expanded, and uh, that never really took off with this. And it, it, it seems like maybe it had some momentum, and they just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, they, they missed it. They, they didn't, uh, you know, get it out there in time. and. Um, I haven't really heard anything bad about it. Right. Maybe a little bit slow moving, but uh, uh, but they're very well made. A uh, great movie. Um, what about you, know? Tina? Have you seen this one? I love this movie. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I really. A sudden, very serious look on Tina's face. I did. It was very thoughtful. It was very realistic. It was very. And it's about a real program that is uh, taking wild mustangs and giving them to prisoners to uh, tame, to break, and then to sell to uh, agencies that will use them for, you know, for horse uh, police use mm. generally. Well, it's a really sweet movie. Well, very yeah. interesting. Andy, did you see this one? No, I didn't get to see this mm -hmm. one. <clears throat> uh, this is one of those movies that uh, they made for almost nothing. I mean, seriously, it makes, mm -hmm. this makes the intruder's budget look huge. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 Uh, but it's a really worthwhile movie to see. Yeah, the, I mean, the, uh, I think uh, Tina will testify that the, it, you know it's it's pretty
professional level uh, mm -hmm. in, in all respects, even though the, the budget was almost non-existent. Very um, interesting. Uh, and uh, what, a, what a wonderful message this is. You know, with the problem of uh, recidivism uh, in our uh, criminal uh, justice system is uh, is huge sure. and, and uh, very very sad. I was on a I was on a, uh, uh, a grand jury one time where a guy had gotten out of prison for murder after 30 years and immediately uh, set up a, a drug dealing operation. I mean, just about as soon as he got outside of the uh, uh, prison prison walls, mm -hmm. he immediately became involved in. Uh, multiple multiple felonies so it's a it's a real real problem and this is a, a ray of, of hope out there uh, this particular program and uh, uh, it's gotten it's gotten great reviews uh, and it's profitable but it's only profitable because they didn't spend anything to make it. Uh, it it's only, that's it's only, wrong with control and expense. And the yeah. nice thing about it is they don't they don't saccharin it up. It's not airy fairy sweetie pie. It's no. a, it's it's very thought provoking. Even the ending is not necessarily you know like oh isn't that wonderful he's like all totally healed and a member of society so they don't doesn't. all run off into the sunset no, living happily ever no, after but i mean it's just beautiful wow it's very interesting yeah hey we got a caller on the line at 27 minutes past the hour 66 degrees hi you're on room country forum sorry to make you wait very good how are you doing Right. Yeah, that's 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 a really good point. And yet, his connection with the horse helped <coughs> him somewhat connect with his daughter, and you know, and just it just sort of softened him up. And I I was very touched by that. Very interesting. So you said that the, the you know the movie had some uh, positive points and negatives. What would what would the negative be in your opinion, caller? Oh. Uh, Sad thing. That's certainly been a controversial subject, and you know, with them not actually being indigenous to the area necessarily, but but interesting. And, and uh, I don't know. I'm actually I need to go see the Mustang. I, the more I hear from y'all, I think that might be something I need to go see. Anyway, thank you very much for the phone call. We definitely appreciate it and the perspective on that one. Uh, also, now is uh, Shazam still playing? It is. Yes. Shazam. How's that been doing? Done. Done great. Really? That's it's been there for around four or five weeks now, so it right. has been there for a while, and it's. Has tapered off, but yeah, it did really good for us. So another Captain here, uh, Captain Marvel movie without uh, the title, um, basically. Um, mm -hmm. and, but it uh, uh, it plays at one, four, seven, and all of those are in 2D. It's rated PG-13, and I had a chance to see that one. Matt. Now I understand uh, La La Rona and the Missing Link both left yesterday. Is that right? Yes, they're they're gone. Okay. All right. Uh, the Shazam's a lot of fun, uh, the, and it's it's doing really well uh, uh, at the box office. Uh, the setup is that this uh, little kid, well, a 14 year old kid, uh, says Shazam and he turns into the superhero, uh, but he's still a 14 year old kid inside a superhero body. And back when we were all 14, wouldn't we have been, you know, just uh, giddy? Very happy to <laughs> say that and all of a sudden have a superhero body and now we can do yeah, this. So there, yeah. there's all kinds of uh, uh, teenager kind of uh, goof goofy stuff going on. So right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a really fun movie, and it's doing really well all across the country. Nice, nice. All right, here we get another caller on the line at uh, 9.30. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. Hello there, how you doing? Yay! <laughs> oh. <coughs> no, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs>
bureau of land management, you know, they're so busy. But uh, you, you caught that one, I don't want to spoil it or anything, but you caught that part where the, you know, the horse freaked out because of helicopters coming over, you know, more towards the end. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of think they had to resurrect that whole scared straight thing that they used to do. Yeah, I agree. You know, I was going to ask you, you couldn't pick one. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> now, now I'm not surprised yeah, anymore. Yeah, you're like right? me. I, I've got a whole page. All right, so who are your favorites? Mm. Oh, okay. Right. <gasps> oh, Fletch. Fletch. Yeah, but Fletch. Fletch is my favorite Chevy Chase movie. That is just yeah, one of the funniest I'm, movies ever made. When I'm thinking movie hero, I'm <laughs> that Chevy Chase never even entered my mind. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. <laughs> hey, thanks for the call. Thank I appreciate you. it. See you tomorrow. All right, and uh, well, interesting. Now, you know, and that's our, our trivia question today. We'd like to be thinking about. I, I what? Who's your favorite movie hero? Whether it's actually the actor's name or the character they portray. We've got a few thoughts to toss out to you, but be thinking about that and give us a ring. 474-2427. Back five minutes in front of 10 o'clock, 67 degrees. Looking for that high of 78. More on that weather coming up in a little bit. Meanwhile, this morning on Rim Country Forum, as we do on Fridays, talking with your hometown movie guys. And I want to find out now, uh, Tina, when I ask you, who's your favorite movie hero? What kind of names come to your mind? Well, you know, going defaulting always to my, you know, first of the top ten, Chinatown. Oh. Yeah, I look at uh, Jack Nicholson playing, you know, essentially an anti-hero, right. uh, Jake Giddis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, j just the, the range of that movie and the range of what he goes through, it's, it's extraordinary. He's, it's a great part. Um, yeah, I understand yeah. acting out that part is kind of hard in your nose. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that movie. Oh, that, man, I, I must have seen that movie a hundred times. I know every line. I know the whole movie. And is there any kind, I, I'm trying to think of any uh, uh, type of movie that Jack Nicholson hasn't done. I mean, uh, uh, he's been in so many different things. Yes, he, he has. And he plays comedy pretty well. Yeah? Um, you know, but, um, and then I'm just going to move on, Clint Eastwood. I mean, uh -huh. I love Clint, and Clint in so many different parts. The good, the bad, and the hunky. Yeah, there, there you go, my senior thesis. But uh, <laughs> really, really, what a wonderful, he, he's such a talented guy. And even his latest, the hero that he plays in The Mule. Oh, I really like that movie very much. It's a wonderful, wonderful part. <coughs> and kind of a, a coming to a, a full circle reckoning for, you know, past uh, foibles and things like that with the family. And everything. Well, and it's just got a lot of interesting twists and turns to that And being movie. old. You know, just examine. And he played that part really well. Yeah. Oh, he did. As an old well, he's person. old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, Michelle suggested uh, Rutger Hauer in Blade Runner and oh, Lady right. Hawk, and I agree with that. And, and I had not, she, Blade was, Runner. she was talking about Lady Hawk. I had uh -huh. never heard of that movie before. That's a wonderful movie. Yeah. yeah. But Blade Runner, he plays a uh, a replicant, which is you know a, a non-human, right, right. human-looking thing, Clone and thing. he has. A speech at the at the time in which he has to expire because he's programmed to not live very long. And that is a very very touching 
beautiful, heroic speech. Oh, interesting. I've seen the starships burning in the arms of Orion. Yes, yes, wow. yes. And then nice he says, his, his big line is, time to die. <coughs> Hmm. It's very, very I say touching. that every day when I start the show. <laughs> um, Twenty. She begs. No, <laughs> because of you, because of me. Uh, Twenty-two and a half in front of ten o'clock. We have a caller on the line. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Thanks for calling. Very good. How are you? Hey, Terry. Half the day off work. Wow. Yay. Good choice. <laughs> For the time, you know, the names that are in it, they were at the top, you know, as far as the comedian, yes. uh, comedian. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Richard yes. Pryor was a writer on that in show? In fact, they, they even, wasn't he supposed to play the part that Cleveland Little played? Yeah. Right, but he helped to write it, and oh, right. Yes, and I've Whoa. seen it. It's um, I forget the name uh, of it. The Highwaymen. Yes, with Woody Harrelson. And he is, uh, everybody should see this. It's on Prime, and it's excellent. Very interesting. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thanks for calling. Some great choices there. And again, we were asking, if you just tuned in, we were asking, well, what's your favorite movie hero? Now, it can either be the, the character that they played or the actual actor themselves. And, you know, going along with some of, uh, uh, I mean, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. I thought that was, especially in the, the very first one. Yeah. Um, Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah. I mean, there, there wasn't one of those Indiana Jones movies that I wasn't thoroughly entertained by. I just, I, I like those weird kind of fantasy, whatever you, uh, what, what do you classify those as? Sci-fi. Is that sci-fi? Yeah. It was interesting, anyway. And then, you know, when, when talking to some folks here before the show today, uh, you know, there's uh, some of us more... Um, chronologically challenged folks that might also remember Audie Murphy as being a big hero um, in real life as well as in the yes. movie. Yes. And uh, uh, one person this morning that I talked to even said, well, what about Roy Rogers? It's like, well, there you go. Okay then. I owe silver away. Yeah. Guess what I got with us? Like 20 minutes in front of the hour. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How's it going? Forbidden Planet, yeah. This is Phil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And? Yeah. But uh, a tremendously influential uh, uh, movie. Uh, we couldn't have we couldn't have done uh, cinema without having that uh, in in our archive. Yeah, I agree. And I remember watching that as a kid and just being absolutely mesmerized. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Robbie the Robbie the robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what do you remember at all what year that came out? Oh my goodness. I think so too. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Interesting. Hey, well, we appreciate the input. Thanks yeah, again for the call. Thank you. Yeah. I definitely do it. And the name again was? It's um, uh, Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet. I'll have yeah. to check that out. Very yeah, interesting. And, and Robbie the Robot uh, went on to have uh, a, a long career in movies that uh, continues. Right. Very interesting. Uh, so all of a sudden, uh, Robbie the Robot was uh, in uh, Lost in Space. Uh, uh, both the, the TV version, which went on for years and years and, and he years. was always kind of like somebody else's robot, not the robot on, uh, you know, with the... the no, he was like their nanny. <laughs> yeah, right. Dr. Right, Smith, yeah. Dr. Smith. Oh, danger, yeah. danger, yeah. danger. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But that I, was Robbie the Robot? That was Robbie I, the Robot. I need to hop in with a hero because, you know, really, honestly, Braveheart, uh, Gibson, come yeah. on. 
If I had to pick, yeah. maybe maybe the even above Jake Gittes in yeah. Chinatown. And, Ray and, Far, what a hero! And, and there's another movie yeah. that that had a bit of a departure from you know true historical fact. Yes. But uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I just I like that. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Mel also made The Patriot. Yeah. Which is another, that was another good you know one too. hero, you know an ordinary man rising to heroic. Um, you know, to heroic levels. Well, another, like, again, oh, sort of a true story. Yeah. Yes. And, and another one, kind of along the same lines, Last of the Mohicans, uh, Dennis uh, Day-Lewis. Da da Daniel Day-Lewis, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. yeah. That DDD guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, a DDL, mm -hmm. rather. Uh, he, uh, I, I, I like the part that he played in that, and I, that's, all, that's also been a, a real favorite. That If I see it on TV, I can't turn away from it. I just, I, and I've seen it probably a dozen times, but I'll, I'll be happy to watch it 13 or 14. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Now, uh, uh, again, asking this morning your favorite uh, uh, movie hero. Now, <laughs> just handed a note saying, favorite movie hero, Yoda. Oh, oh. Yoda. <laughs> a good choice that was, uh, or something <laughs> like that. Right. Uh, but uh, very interesting. Well, what about Steve McQueen in The Great Escape? Oh, man, that was, that's yeah. another good one. And, yeah. well, and he, you know, he played a great role in a bunch of different movies. But he yes. played in Papillon. Yeah, that's right. And you know, I, I was just, uh, during the break, I was suggesting that everybody watch the new Papillon, which I believe is on Prime, with Charlie uh, Hunnam, is that how we pronounce his name, Hunnam? And Rami Malek. Right. And, you know, it's a true story about a man who survived the unbelievable uh, abuse uh, from the French uh, penal colony in Guyana and Devil's Island. He, right. he ended up being in solitary confinement a total of seven years. That'll leave a mark. Oh, man. And he lived to escape and to write his story, and it was published. It was a best bestseller. I think the, the, uh, his real life took place during the 30s, and his name was Henri Charrière. Easy for you to say. Yes, it was. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Steve McQueen is, is just a tremendous actor. Yes. Uh, I, I got to see uh, The Blob on TV the other night, <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't seen it in you know, 60 years probably. <clears throat> and, and, and it's that, really loose around the edges. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the movie is not, is not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, it, it really, in any, any respect. It was Steve McQueen's first movie. Yeah. And uh, he is uh, just a, a blazing star you know, in this uh, uh, firmament of, of, uh, of mud. <laughs> Tell us what you're really. Yeah, it's no, the it's, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's just really not. A but good he really stands out, even, he, even amidst all the bad writing and all yeah, that. Stuff. That's right. And, and his first movie, um, and you can see why, uh, even at that at that point in his life, uh, he was destined to uh, to be, uh, yeah. you know, a great great movie star. Yeah, oh, very yeah, and he was great in Papillon. I mean, you well, know, he was right. Dustin Hoffman. That was great movie. So Michelle just came into the studio and handed me a note saying, uh, favorite uh, uh, hero for her, Kurt Russell from Escape to New York. Or Escape, Escape from New York. Oh, Escape, Escape from New York. Yeah, All Snake right. Plis Snake yeah. Plissken? Snake yes. Plissken, one of my favorite characters. John Carpenter, one of my favorite directors. Really? Oh, man, he wrote, he wrote the, the movie uh, They Live, which everybody needs to see. But yeah, Escape from New York, Snake Plissken. Yeah, every time you uh, yeah. uh, bring up They Live, uh, you always forget uh, Ro Ro Rowdy Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper, yeah. yeah. He was a wrestler. Yeah, you forget his other movie, which has had as one of the great titles in uh, the, the whole genre of uh, uh, sci-fi flicks, uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown. Yes. <laughs> How did I not see that one coming? <laughs> anyway, we have to take a fast break. We're going to come back. What's your favorite uh, movie hero of all time? Give us a call. 474 degrees. And looks like a beautiful, warm, sunny weekend, but there is some showers headed our way. Uh, so when can you expect those? A complete look at your seven-day forecast coming up in just a little bit. So keep it right here on KMOG. This morning on Rim Country Forum, talking with our hometown movie guys, uh, Tina, Andy, and Craig, and uh, amongst a number of things, asking you, who your favorite uh, TV movie hero is, and uh, or not TV movie hero, but just movie hero, period. And uh, give us a ring like these folks did. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. Hello there. And to you too, thanks. And and so, what are you thinking when it comes to you know favorite movie heroes? What what kind of names come to your mind? 
Oh, oh good choice. Yeah, Dr. No and all the other ones. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. That, that was a great movie. Excellent yeah. movie. Yeah. Very good. Now, and uh, now, of course, I, I don't know that I've seen, I, I, I haven't seen a lot of Sean Connery movies, but I don't think I've seen one that I didn't like. Um, he, he had quite a, a list of movies that he was in over the years. Any other uh, uh, movie hero names come to mind, caller? <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's, there's a, you got to so have be, a hero you'll company. Be there tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> so are you coming to see uh, Blazing Saddles tomorrow? Oh man! I mean, they truly don't make them like that anymore. No. Yeah. yeah, and he and he's he's in the movie. You're right. He's he's actually in the movie. Always oh, does little cameos. Oh yeah, right yeah, he's great. You're, you're so right. <laughs> but that won't stop us from going and seeing it during Classic Movie Saturday at the Sawmill Theater. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get picked in it or what. So. <laughs> yeah, well, find out afterwards. Film at 11. Hey, thanks for the call. We do appreciate it. Now, one of the other and, things... Uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, Sean Connery has made just tons and tons and tons of movies. Yeah. Now, we know him best from, uh, of course, from the James Bond movies. Uh, but he made, for my money, what is absolutely the best role. Robin Hood movie ever. Yes. Uh, Robin and Marion. Yes. Right. Beautiful. Wow. Movie. Was, yes. Yeah. I mean, truly. That was very, a good and a very sort of somber movie where mm -hmm. they're older. Yeah. It was with Audrey Hepburn, I believe, wasn't uh, it? Was and the Hunt for Red so October. Somebody, uh, the Hunt for Red October. Yeah. And but but you were. Uh, the, I think it was with Audrey Hepburn. I'll maybe. Uh, Interesting. Uh, and he made a he made a uh, an outer space movie. Uh, I think it was called uh, Outlands. Yes, Outlander. Out Outlander. Outlands, Outlands, I think. Or Outlands, yes. Yeah. Uh, where oh, that he, was really He good. plays a, a, a sheriff uh, investigating skullduggery on a, a, a mining outpost on one of the moons of Jupiter. Hmm. And wow, is it good. Woo. Really interesting. And not special effecty, uh, just uh, you know, fabulous acting. I've just been handed another note, too. We were talking about Steve McQueen earlier. Uh, this person is saying, hey, Steve McQueen in Bullet. Uh, yep. A great hero spot there. And we're asking you what you think. 474-2427. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Thanks for calling. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying you. it. So what, what kind of names come to mind when we ask you about a favorite movie hero? Oh, oh Charles they steal Bronson. my heart. Yes. Uh, so we're we talking what? De Death Wish or what? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> <clears throat> I agree. <laughs> that ha the guy, Charles Bronson, just has a face like, "Don't mess with me. I'm grumpy." It's, you know, kind of like when Tina comes in here at the beginning of the show, <laughs> um, but uh, a little different face. Uh, but uh, interesting, Charles Bronson, and yeah. is, uh, I can't remember. Is Charles, Charles Bronson still around? No. Uh, he did pass away. No. That would explain why I haven't seen him in a while. But he was also in, if I'm not mistaken, The Magnificent Seven. Oh. And what, I mean, that's a movie full of heroes. Right. You know, they're just a, just a wonderful movie. Very interesting, yeah. very interesting. And uh, Bronson is known for his kind of tough guy things. And he did a movie, something like, I can't remember exactly the, the title, but it's like 314 in the afternoon. Oh, the three twelve to Yuma or something. No, no, no. Uh, so this is a this is a story about a, a, a bad man who has an encounter with a uh, a, a woman, and then years later uh, they have a chance to meet again, and their their recollection of their encounter is like a hundred and eighty degrees apart. It's just it's really an amazing movie, and it shows uh, what a good actor he was. Interesting. What about you when it comes to favorite movie heroes, uh, Craig? What, what comes to your mind? Uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh, there you go. Rocky. Rocky, Rocky. Yeah, Rocky. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, um, also or Rambo is a good one, too. I mean, that, that first one especially I thought was quite good. Uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, there you go. Die Hard. Die Hard. Yeah. And what was the... Uh, uh, Ar was he in Armageddon too? Um, he was. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was yeah. A good one. Yeah. And, uh, well, and of course, he also played in the greatest movie of all time, The Fifth Element, <laughs> by, and the, by Luc Besson, that, who is the director. Yes. Uh, but that is it's just it a, is a, a it is great, a great movie. great movie. Yeah, and the whole nine yards. Remember, the oh, whole yes. nine yards. He played um, uh, Jimmy the Tulip. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they hit man. Oh, that that is such a funny movie. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, seven minutes in front of ten, another caller. Let's take another call. Hi, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Oh, the mechanic. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Wow! Oh. <laughs> I like Brian now. Right. <laughs> right, here comes the one-liners. Uh, be careful. Uh, but you know, some good choices there. Uh, just handed another note. Someone said uh, James Earl Jones. Oh yes, excellent. Um, you know, so I'm trying to. What he, he was, was he? He was Darth Vader, wasn't he? No. Yeah, Luke, I am your father. He was, he was the voice of Darth Vader. Right, right. He was the voice of Darth Vader. Uh, not the yeah. face, but uh, yeah. anyway. And uh, this is a good opportunity for me to uh, interject something. Uh, uh, very sadly, we've uh, lost another another oh, yeah. actor, uh, Peter Mayhew. He uh, played, Chewbacca. played Chewbacca. He played Chewbacca, yes. Yeah. And he, he passed away at the age of 74 here. You know, and, and really, you know, in acting, I would think that one of the disadvantages to becoming famous um, as an actor would be that you can't go anywhere without everybody recognizing you and stuff. And at least uh, here's a gentleman who made the money, became famous, everybody knew his character, but nobody would ever recognize him on the street. That's true. And uh, uh, oh, another <laughs> Suzanne just came in. Harrison Ford and Patrick Swayze. Pa now, who is. Uh, Pat, but Patrick, uh, now we're talking, you know, just hero of your heart, is that it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well done. Now, is it from, like, Ghost, or what are you? Everything. Everything. Okay, everything. everything. Even, you know, even, even the, the insurance commercials that he's yeah, doing now. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> he was a major dancer. What a beautiful, he danced with the Joffrey Ballet. He was, he, uh -huh. his mom was a ballet teacher, and he was such a good dancer. So when you look at Dirty Dancing, the man knew how to dance. And it wasn't something he just picked oh, up for that one. Oh, fabulous. Roadhouse. Movie. Also, yeah. also, also yeah. he was yes. on Red Dawn. Red Dawn. Oh, Red Dawn. He was yeah. such a hero. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I just the original one, not the second one, which uh, so sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make me crazy yeah, just like thinking it. about it. No, but it, 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 I just thought this question this morning would be fascinating, because I think we all come at this you know, from uh, different perspectives. Um, as far as movie characters that I, I thought uh, were great heroes, uh, Wyatt Earp uh, uh, came to mind, and, and of course that's been played by a few different people a few different times. But right. I just I always kind of like that. Uh, and uh, boy, you know, it seems like uh, uh, there's been a few names that have come up a, a couple of times here between the Indiana Jones thing and the Star Wars stuff. But um, interesting. So I have another one. This. I have another one. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, one of my favorite movies, and it should have been on my top ten, is Beckett with Peter O'Toole and Richard Burton, a 1964 movie about Sir Thomas of Becket. True story, I mean, it was dramatized, but Richard Burton plays the priest who was a debauched friend of Henry, uh, the King, King Henry, I forget which one, and becomes a, a man of God and refuses to do the bidding of his, the king, who was his best friend and ends up having him murdered. Wow. And uh, Richard Burton, you know, we forget what a great, great actor he was, and Peter O'Toole. Mm -hmm. Peter O'Toole, wow. Yeah, so that's a movie that everybody should see. Mm. Yeah. So Val Kilmer. Oh, Val Kilmer. Oh, Val Kilmer. Yeah. Yeah. And Tombstone. Yeah. Tombstone. Oh, Doc yes. Holliday. Well, if we're going to talk yes, about Val Kilmer, and Tombstone. If we're going to talk about Val Kilmer, we, yeah. Kilmer, we have to talk about Tom Cruise and uh, uh, Top Gun, too. Yep. I mean, uh, if, and then. Uh, real quick, uh, I, I, uh, Craig, I know you've got uh, a comment that you want to get in on, but I, before I forget, uh, during the last break, uh, Tina, you made, in my opinion, the the absolute top pick as far as movie hero, and it was? It was The Passion of the Christ, with Jesus Christ being the top hero, played by Jim Caviezel. It don't get any and better Mel, than that. And Mel Gibson directed, God bless yeah. him. And, yeah. and uh, amidst a lot of uh, scrutiny about his personal life uh, after that, but I, I think that's just the, you know, the forces between good and evil that are at yeah. war around us all the time. I love yeah. that. All right, what were you going to say, Greg? I, 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 I took you I completely know, down a different road. Not going to follow that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, try and beat Christ, all right? <laughs> Yeah, just try. <laughs> I, I was just going to plug a movie that's coming up. Smart movie. No, we got uh, in two weeks. We got uh, John Wick. 
uh, Keanu Reeves. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Keanu Reeves. And this is what second, the third, this third? the third and third. last, yeah, wow. the, the the John Wick series. Yeah. Very interesting. And it? he trains. I mean, that man is really, really good at what he does. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. I mean, some of the yes. quotes that come out of him just in regular life are seem pretty insightful. Seems like he's got his head screwed on pretty straight. He's pretty young. Yeah. yeah, interesting. When is that movie supposed to be here? So the fifteenth or seventeenth? Excellent. Just a couple weeks oh, out. Oh, of this month. Yeah. Yes, wow. yeah. Very good. Yeah. See, I will so go see that. Yeah, me too. I love the John Wick character. Uh, I'd like to encourage people to uh, go to our Facebook page, uh, The Hometown Movie Dives, All right. uh, where we have uh, stuff up there uh, uh, of interest to you for uh, movie movie buffs. So just look for your hometown movie guys on Facebook, and uh, you'll have, uh, if you need an extra fix in between Fridays, you'll find it there on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, great news, too, on uh, Kino Reeves' uh, front. Uh, at there's at some stage of production now uh, is uh, the third in the uh, Bill and Ted series. Wow! Uh, of course, that's where uh, Keanu Reeves certainly came to my attention was uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And he's playing kind of a cool dude. Dude, he's like, whoa! It's like it's like the 70s all over again. He's go ahead and twinkie. Anyway, um, hey, we appreciate our hometown movie guys being here. Don't forget to check them out on Facebook. Just look for your hometown movie guys on Facebook. And we appreciate you. Go ahead. And look for my uh, movie reviews in the Roundup. The Basin Roundup. You got it. Hey, thanks for listening this morning to Rim Country Forum. It's been brought to you by Banner Basin Medical Center, George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, At Your Service Tree Service and Cleaning, and ITV Group Computer Services. You're listening to Rim Country Radio, KMOG Pace, and coming up on 10 o'clock, 67.